Spectre is survived. Spectre is hard. Hard. Oh my god. We're gonna fall. Fuck. Okay. She says it cried. Oh my god. Somebody should like plaster her more of us. Oh, look at it. Uh, it's going. It's really nasty. Fuck. <laughs> to watch my house first. God damn it. I'm, I'm still gonna sit on it just so I could talk to you. Um, I think honestly, you know what, considering the video that we're about to make today, it, it kind of makes sense just to have this be our aesthetic. Um, so, okay. Hello there, my friends. Welcome to my safe little corner of the internet. And, uh, well, actually, I'm not sure it's quite safe right now, just because, um, as you can see, we have a lot of rust, we have a lot of dirt, a lot of shit going on. And as you can tell by how I'm looking, I'm currently hangover because last night I got so hammered, like I, I went off crazy. <laughs> and today it's like actually I, I was planning like a different video today. I was planning like a classy like video or like I might be reading Ed Island Poe. I might like read like Silver Platt's poems. You know, like I dress very sophisticated, but not. This is not this is not the mood today, girls. It's not the mood today. And you know what? It's it's October. Let's, I think let's save that for like November. I think that's, that, that would probably be the better time for us. But no, it's October, babe. It's Halloween. And when it's Halloween, it's do what saw. Yeah, this is an old DVD that I have, that I bought when I was a kid. Um, I think it was like around, what's the, when is the, the date for this? I bought it around, yeah, 2014, 2014, 2015, when there were still only seven movies in the Saw series. And, and I just really want to talk about Saw because I feel like, especially this Halloween, uh, maybe I'm going to like just document, you know, my love for horror and everything for, for as, as a part of this month. I should really go down kind of like a bit of a rabbit hole in terms of like the, the, the the things that you know I'm interested in war in the first place and you know, last week I show you last week was it last week I think it's like a few days ago right right oh my god I'm so drunk right now I thought it was like a month ago actually but uh, okay um <laughs> oh shit all right so I think it's actually quite appropriate like I I don't even have makeup or anything on I'm looking very unpolished okay very very saw core as you could say I'm very saw core so, I don't know when I made that video, but I made it, and you all seem to really enjoy it. So I'm just gonna keep going down this rabbit hole a bit in, in, the term, in terms of the fact that Saw is actually the very first horror film that I ever watched. And I think I watched it when I was five or six years old on a shitty computer on a free movie website um, as a kid at night when my mother was asleep. And before that, I, I heard a bit about, you know, Oh, Saw and everything. I, because like before that, I was into Godzilla, but I was like getting interested in horror films and stuff and like hearing about it. And like the kids in the playground were like, oh my God, you got to check out some horror films and stuff. And I'm like, okay, uh, what, what, what are some good horror films and everything, right? And then they're always like talking about Saw, like Saw is like the most violent, the most like horrific and everything. And there's a twist ending. Twist ending is crazy. So this is like circa 2010. You know, so it's just like, yeah, people are still talking about us. You know, I think like, at least in Thailand, you know, like not so much like paranormal activity or whatever. Like, I know they talk a bit about like the conjuring, especially like Annabelle, because she's iconic, even though she's always gonna, you know, not be as amazing as Chucky, but who cares? Um, um, no diss to Annabelle, please don't come mess with me. But at the same time, I'm not, I'm not so scared of you, girl. I, I got a gay friend. I think he's like, <laughs> No, no, he's not. Oh, technically, kinda, kinda, right? It's because because Chucky was the, was with Tiffany, but then um, uh, what was her name? It was in like a, a woman's body. So technically, he's kinda gay. He's kinda lesbian, right? I don't know. He's got a gender fluid child. I think that's enough to be scared of. <laughs> so okay, I'm back to my diva shot. So yeah. uh, I. I was like, yeah, so I wanted to watch Saw, so so I couldn't find a copy or anything, but I watched it, I ended up watching it online. Yeah. And I remember just not ending, haunting me for a while. Like I couldn't sleep that night because I was like, holy shit, that's so fucked up, dude. And so I, I will forever remember 
and I'll scream. I will remember that that fucking theme song. My God, like what what an iconic theme, right? Even right now, I can't just want to like go like da 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 da. I after that, I proceeded to try to find like the rest of the series, but um, I don't know why I didn't end up like watching them. Um, online I instead like I kind of moved on to like watch other stuff but it wasn't until I found this DVD which was sold at a Thai bookstore and before back, back in those days they would still sell movies they would still sell DVDs at those bookstores but right but now they don't now now DVDs are basically like non-extent which is kind of kind of sad but you know uh, instead of buying DVDs now I buy myself cigarettes so uh, I Foreshadowing, because we're gonna have a bit of secret. I need, I need it. You know, I need it, especially when I'm um, trying to recover from moving over. You, you gotta give me a break, girl. It's bad. And uh, you gotta give me a break, Jigsaw. Don't put me in a trap because I fucking smoke cigarettes. Oh shit, that made me remember. Oh yeah, uh, in Sussex. Yeah, that's 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 the trap, alright. Okay, I'm going kind of a million miles. Let me bad chat. So I got this DVD, which I'll I'll, I'll open it for you. The, one thing that I have to say is really awful about it is that, so as you can see, they release it with ratings, with like the, the full rating, right? So you see this, you would assume that, oh, you know, this is like 20 plus. So that means they're probably going to have the uncut version of the film right here. But no, that's not what happens. And even as a kid, I still remember being mortified as I went through the series because, okay, the first film, it's fine. The first film is actually not as like graphic as what's about to come, right? So there were only like a few weird like mm -hmm. edits that was a little noticeable, but it, it didn't ruin the experience, right? But then there was Saw 2. And these DVDs, they're, they're for censoring, they do something that's extremely, extremely bizarre. They don't just cut around it, they don't just censor it, no. They would select less, like, gory shots and stretch them out and slow motion them out while the background noise is still in the same speed as, like, normally. But now the footage is just the portion that isn't as violent stretched out into, like, a weird, jarring slow motion. And it's like the pacing is all fucked up and it just it it is awful. It is just the worst way possible. And I don't and, and, and I think I just remember thinking like as a kid even watching it and thinking like, oh my god, this series is it's not even that gory because like I, I watched, you know, those portions but then soon after I would see the clips online, right? Like on YouTube or whatever, and I'll be like, Oh, okay, I guess yeah, that's that's how it's supposed to be. But <laughs> you know, I grew up with these DVDs, unfortunately. But here's the first Saw film. You know, we have, we have Adam, we have Dr. Gordon. Where is Dr. Gordon in this? We have two Adams, we don't have Dr. Gordon. What is going on? This is, this is gay erasure. This is, this is whitewashing of gay history. <laughs> so, let's have a look at the DVD. Look at that, we have leg, arm. Yeah. What did they ever cut an arm in the Saw movies? I don't know, let's, let's read the back, just a little back. Like obsessed with teaching his victims the value of life, a deranged, sadistic serial killer. See, Jigsaw, you are a serial killer. Yeah, that's what you are. Abducts the morally wayward. Once captured, they must face impossible choices in a horrific game of survival. The victims must struggle to win back his life, his or her life, or else die trying. What if I just give up? What if I don't even die trying? <laughs> I, I'm definitely somebody who, if, if, if I were to be in one of these movies, Jigsaw would definitely come for me because I, yeah, I'm, I'm very ungrateful of life, as he would put it. Okay. There's like the back. And oh my God, I hate these DVDs so much. Look at that. Special features, scene selections. On. Then, okay, we got Saw 2, which, rewatching these, like rewatching the, the first one is still pretty great. It's very slow though, I would say. It's like, it's not as, how do you call it? It's, it's definitely a bit caught up with its own details and its own like world building and trying to be very edgy, but it's still very entertaining. And I would say, especially like considering in retrospect, I do really appreciate the simplicity of this, even if it's a bit weird now in hindsight, just to see how like the game here is like so weirdly like simple for, for Jigsaw. 
you know, it's not very elaborate. It's not very like explosive. It's just like, yeah, it's just, just I don't know. Maybe it's one of his off days. Let's let's put two people in in, in a bathroom or whatever. Okay, cool. You know, what would be amazing if his if his plan failed because the two of them got got up together. What if, what if the two of them end up together? You put two people in a bathroom and they don't kill each other. They instead like fall in love. That now now that's that's game over. Here's saw two, which I disagree with a lot of people because I actually really don't like this at all. I hate yeah. this movie so much in a sense of like the the part with Jigsaw and the police officer. I don't remember the name, but like. Those are like interesting, right? But just everybody else in the whole cast sucks. Like everybody is so cynical to the point of them being like a cartoon character. Like everybody's like so unlikable. And, and it's just like, I don't feel any, they, they, they're just not as compelling. Like for example, in Saw, in Saw 5, yeah, those characters are like really hateable too. But at the very least, I feel like it's very compelling, right? In the, in the, in the sense of like, they know who they are and they know what they've done wrong. But at the same time, they're still they're still falling for it. They're still going for for that impulse of, of that's like very negative and everything. But here it's just basically like everybody is horrible. Everybody is a terrible person. Even if you're a drug addict, even if you're a rich person, whatever. Everybody's horrible. There's no reason. There's no impulse. There's no character behind it. Everybody's just bad, bad, bad. And it's just, that's kind of the, the point here. Um, and actually, I would say now that there is Saw X. Um, uh, that, you know, in, in in this franchise, it kind of reveals to me just how weak the reveal that Amanda is the apprentice is. Just because it, it feels like look at Saw X. Saw X like they save it for just like the midpoint reveal, and I feel like that's that's how strong that twist actually is. It's not something that holds the entire film, at least in my opinion. It, at the very least, in the context of this film, it feels very like, well, there's not really a lot of other logical choices for you to go in terms of twists beside from, oh, one of them is actually working for, you know, Jigsaw, because it's like, yeah, like, what else could be the twist, right? And, and it's just, yeah, I'm not too, I'm not too fond of this, unfortunately. Like, there's some great traps here, and I really do kind of like, the third act of how that goes and there's some funny moments there like this i think this is what like this franchise is surprisingly very funny <laughs> there's some great lines there's a, like with the first saw you know you have carrie elvis switching between a, an english accent and like an american accent and it's glorious every time and lee Whannell is being uh, the most relatable stoner ever <laughs> that's true and we have a saw too where, you know, I, I love the bit with the ringtone where where a police officer fucking picks up his son's like phone and then like Jigsaw just put his like voicemail on that. It's like, oh, sorry, Danny can't come to the phone right now. That's wonderful. I think that's, that's great. This, yeah, this franchise is, is comedic genius. If you don't know that, it's very, it's very crucial, you know. And here is Saw 3, which a lot of people would disagree with me, but it's one of the best in my opinion, just because I feel like there's so much Grout hearts here, and there's so much theatricality, and I actually feel like the drama at the center of this with slow motherfucking job. <laughs> I think there's like tr a truly something very heartbreaking to this because I feel like with this, it's very much so a film about legacy, right? It's the legacy of Jigsaw, but it's also the legacy of the death, you know, of, of Jeff's like son, and how we're unable to, how that potential right, of like death to go. <laughs> coming at us and, and, and just how it shaped our legacy and how, and how the people that we have shaped and helped along the way, who's our child or our apprentice or all of that, how that very much so plays in, into that. And then just, I don't know, I feel like there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on here actually. And of course there is that's sort of a, a sapphic tension, love-hate sapphic tension between um, Amanda and the nurse, which of course I can't help but just find absolutely like hot. And uh, that's also part of the reason why I love this so much. So yeah, Saw, Saw 1 and Saw 3, these are the gayest of the series and, and, and that is something to truly be that and why you, ha you should go watch it. And, I must say, I love the ending to this so much. I truly do. The theatrical cut uh, ending, the editing there, very snappy, very good. The uncut version, just the editing is a, still a little weird, 
but it's still very awesome. The director's cut in, in there. That's fucking awful. Don't 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 watch that shit. That shit is just kind of pompous, kind of like draw, drawing things out a bit too much, taking things a bit too seriously. But those first two endings, oh great, great stuff. That's what I'm talking about. That's that's Saw maybe. That's the peak of like Saw. I I love it so much. I could quote it. I didn't tell you why, Dao, that you couldn't kill me. But the reason is simple. I am the man responsible for the loss of your child. I am the only one who knows where your daughter is. <laughs> she has a limited supply of air, Jeff. And if you want her back, you better play a game or something like that. Oh, Gloria. So actually, I watched this. And funnily enough, I would wholeheartedly recommend people to watch the Saw movies while you're recovering from bottom surgery just because when you're going through that experience you need to be desensitized to gore right and this series will help you do that but at the same time it's not going to disturb you too much just because it's so hokey and it's it's so hokey and it's so so operatic and melodramatic it's 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 hard to take it too seriously but at the same time it's it's a fun series to immerse yourself in and it's like i think it's something that yeah you you will probably get get a lot of uh, good memories while you're going through the most intense and, and, and horrifying and also beautiful and empowering experience that a trans person could go through. So there's a tip for you. If, if you're ever gonna go and have bottom surgery, pop out the Saw movies, baby. Let's watch them. <laughs> so this is actually supposed to be the last of the franchise. And um, no, we're not ending it there. We're, we're gonna go on with Saw 4, which... My God, this one I have the most conflicted feelings with. This is the film where I go back and forth in terms of, oh my God, I really like, first of all, the crazy editing, like transitions, very creative. I think it's one of the most creative films in the franchise. I really like the way this tries to explore, you know, John Kramer's Matt story. That's very interesting how that ties back to the present. I think, you know, actually Hoffman as, as a reveal, not too, not too shabby, I would say, and just, yeah, there's, there's a lot of interest, and especially the whole dilemma with like cops, with like how, you know, you try to save somebody, but the, the thing is, the more you try to, the more, you know, you're going to look good. So it's it's a bit complicated in that sense. But at the same time, I do have a lot of conflict with how convoluted the film is, especially with editing and how all the storyline plays out. It feels very manipulative, like very tricky, right? And not in a fun way, but more in a, we need some way to let the audience be like two steps ahead of us. So we're just gonna jumble this around and hope that you're not gonna be too clued in onto what it is we're doing, which actually is quite obvious. But at the same time, I also feel like the, the themes here with like the politics and cops, it's, I think it's done better in the next film, Saw 5. It's been a while since I, I watched this actually. Um, I, I rewatched the, the entire series this year, but from what I remember, I just find what it's trying to do with like the whole cop thing to be kind of crazy. I like the idea of like how they could get involved into like the nitty gritty stuff, like by having the protagonist, uh, like by having the, pro the protagonist get involved with, you know, conducting a jigsaw game himself. But ultimately I find that to just, yeah, I find that Saw 5 does a lot of what this is trying to do better and more streamlined and more fun in a way. It's less convoluted, which is why I actually quite, like Saw 5, which is where we have Hoffman. We have Hoffman versus Strom, which is, which is a really, like, I think some people, I think this is when, like, people are starting to, like, lose it with the series a bit, just because it's, like, going through, like, it's going to this direction, that direction, and, and, and this is when it's, like, focusing on cop the most in terms of the original series before Spiral, but we don't, we don't talk about Spiral. We don't, we don't count that. That's, that's complete bullshit. So now, so this is um, one of the more, one of, one of the films that's like more, you know, the half section and all of that. It, it feels like, okay, the previous films, we have a lot of melodrama, we have a lot of soap opera. If, if those are like the family soap opera, this is the cop show version of, of Saw, where it's like, yeah, this is the episode where, where you know, we're, we're going to watch Hoffman and absolutely wreck the life of like a good, good police officer. It is, it's it's just it's kind of glorious. I don't know. It's kind of glorious. It's very hokey, and it it does kind of I don't know draw things out a little bit too much. But again, the whole like the the game plot line, 
one of the more compelling ones, especially, you know, with the humans. And I find that there is something kind of interesting how the politics, right? How we're like, okay, these people are able to get away with what, what they did because of the politics of where they live. And it's all linking back to, you know, the cops and shit. So, yeah, I think that whole aspect is definitely very interesting. At the ending, of course, that whole fucking ending. Like that kind of, it still gives me chills. Like that, that absolutely fucking rocks my world, dude. <laughs> my God. And then we got to Saw 6, which if Saw X didn't exist, this would be the best. This would be my favorite, honestly. This, in terms of editing, in terms of performance, in terms of, it's it's all like almost sheer perfection in the sense of like, we're, 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 we're really capturing just everything that this series could do in terms of like entertainment but also interestingly enough as like this commentary on like healthcare and shit i don't know it's 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 not smart it's definitely very dumb and it's definitely quite outdated i would say i would argue it's like way more complicated and this film tries to fucking make it out to be but that's also kind of part of the fun where it's like well we're here for the guts you know we're here, we're here for the guts we're not here for the brains but if there are brain spilling that's that would also be amazing and and yeah, actually, have this series ever done anything with brains? Oh, wait, Saw X. All right, I just remembered. Sorry, my brain got foggy there. This one, again, have some really, really fun stuff. Have really fun. This has the worst opening, though, in terms of the editing of, like, the censoring. Like, you don't even get to see when she, like, hacked her arm off. It's just all slow motion to, like, a mess. It looked like an amateur, like, student film. They, like, they, were, they were trying to, like, film slow motion kung fu. It looks horrible but this this film is like really really fun and there's some I, again there's some amazing interactions in terms of in, in terms of like comedy and Hoffman I have to say Hoffman quite underrated I wish there was he's fucking ruthless this guy is absolute fucking ruthless yeah he's not he might not be as compelling as like John Kramer for sure but at the same time I don't know there's the like, he, he definitely gets the job done, I would say. If you, if you have Hoffman on your team, there's a good chance you're gonna be able to, you know, win shit. So, this one has also one of the best climax in the whole series. Like, I would say in terms of ending, there is uh, Saw 3, there is um, this, and then there is Saw, the first Saw, and after that, down we go downhill. This has one of the most, like, entertaining, like, and just, just, <laughs> we're finishing this spot line and we're going on and we're finishing, we're finishing this spot line and everything just interconnects. It's, it's glorious. It's wonderful. Like, they don't, they don't make it better than this. And that's where we had to talk about <sighs> Saw, the final chapter, we Saw 7, Saw 3D. I wanted to go see this in theaters. And, and of course, my mother was like, you're nine years old. You're not going to do that. But when I got my hands on this and I watched it, I was like, you know what? I think I, my mother might have not just saved uh, the little bits of conscious, the little bits of decency that I still have in here of like not being too desensitized with gore. I think she also saved my time because this was horrific. It was it was horrific. And, and, and just, yeah, although it's strangely enough, this was the least censored um, DVD on here. It's kind of weird. At least just because the gore looks like so fake, which honestly, as it is, damn. The, oh my god, I even forgot to mention like watching Saw 7, actually being quite surprised that because I was still young, you know, I was like surprised when it turns out that like Dr. Gordon was like, you know, in on it as well. I was like, was, it was still a very crazy twist, I must say. But I actually wonder how much they fucking planned that shit out. It didn't feel like that's the, the series was that fun. I remember I read somewhere that like Saw 7 was actually planned to be like two movies, but they have to put it into one just because of the budget and because they, they were forced to film it in 3D, which, yeah. It, that didn't last too long. That didn't last long at all. And then after that, I went and it was like five years, skip five years, right? In 2017, and then we have Jigsaw, which is the first Saw movie that I, I ever saw in theaters. And I went in and I watched it and it was just, I remember sitting there and being kind of planks just because it was like, it, it felt very different, right? Like as a kid, of course, I still couldn't comprehend the fact that, oh, you know, it's like, oh, it's gonna be a reboot, right? So of course it's, it's gotta like change things up. I just expected it to be the same thing, but it, it just, it was so slick, it was so modern, 
and it was so kind of boring and that ending absolutely mortified me because I was like who the fuck is this guy where is he where is that guy he's not in any of these DVDs where where, where does he come from so ultimately I, I was I love that I did have like you know my, my gore lost all of that got satisfied of course but like in terms of the plot in terms of characters and everything it, it did left me feeling very like just you know sad because it was like well is that really it i guess i guess that's it okay i'm gonna go rewatch saw three uh and then flash forward a few years after that and by that point i have watched a lot more movies i've watch a lot more horror movies and everything and and just i don't know like sometimes i would of course like remember saw and i would think about it and, it, and all that but it, it just didn't it did it didn't stay on my mind for for a long time right until i think it was like spiral uh spiral came out in the midst of like the pandemic i didn't go see it even though i did kind of want to but just something about like the cast and again the approach of like we're trying something new we're trying something different it kind of like just makes me feel like well the point with Saw is that the, all of these movies are like the same. They're literally like the same from the best ones to the worst one. They're like the same. So why why exactly are we trying to do something like different? We're trying to do something kind of all more prestigious. Like no, no, we don't we don't need that. Just give me more like cool traps with like gore and shadow melodrama. Oh my god, I love melodrama so much. Hell yeah, give me more of that. Give me more of the drama. And then give me more of the. <laughs> Give me more of the drama that I could like just watch and just yeah see it all go down in complete bloodshed. But nope, we're we're doing more cops procedures, which is fine, you know, which is fine if it's like again like a cop edition or right? soft no. That's not what, what spiral is. What spiral is is basically just like seven but really poorly like done. Really poorly done, really poorly thought out and stylistically very confused. So I did enjoy it. I, I, I ended up watching it on Netflix and it was, yeah, it, it was not a good time. This series, honestly, it's one that keeps on giving just because it likes to come back to my life when I do need it and when I'm not forcing it. Like, for example, of course, with the bottom surgery, I just felt the need to watch it just because I was like, you know what? I'm kind of going through my own weird little Saw experience. So I'm, I might as well watch a Saw movie, but in 4D, you know, like I'm feeling constant pain while I'm watching a, a Saw movie. So let's do that. So I watched, you know, Saw 3 and, and a few of the others. And it, that was a good time. That was a really good time to not be able to walk. And when I do stand out, I feel blood rushing down my legs and just feeling it burn while I go and, and can grab like Coke to drink while I watch people get their like, eyes like punctured i think that's wonderful so i watched saw x when it came to theaters i watched it three times in theaters um twice was in thailand and once was actually in america i was visiting la last year and um i didn't even plan it they were just playing it at the theater like, like free time as spare time so i just went and watched it and yeah people were talking the entire film but it's fine, you know, because eventually, like, when there are shocking things happening, you could hear them just go, oh, or like, oh my god, what are you doing? All that. And, and that's kind of, it has its its kind of charm, if annoying could be a charm. Uh, I think I think it could be, sometimes. Uh, I think I'm, I'm probably the definition of that. But anyway, so I went and saw it three times, and it, and it was, you know, I think with Saw X especially, it's like, yeah, we're giving you something of the same, but at the same time, at, at the same time, I, it's kind of hard because I would argue that it's very much so Saw 6, but just kind of done as if Jigsaw was still alive. Like, it, it was like Saw 6 if Jigsaw was still alive, basically. And just the whole plot, like the medical care and everything. It, 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 yeah, it, it's just like, I, I do love that like I'm basically getting what I, I wanted out of that and at the same time it's really nice that that, that Saw X is in a way kind of this weirdly heartfelt tribute to Tobin Bell and how long he has sticked to this character and how long he has worked with the series and, and played this character but I would argue actually as this celebration of Tobin Bell it's very emblematic of just how weirdly kind of and like, I wouldn't say sad because like obviously a lot of horror actors like Robert Inland or like Kane Harder or like, you know, those people who are like with the horror genre and they play a lot of iconic characters. Like they're awesome, you know, they're awesome. And like, they're very talented in a way. They're, they're, like, like, but they're like very underappreciated, you know, just because of the genre they have to work on. Because horror as a whole is like very underappreciated. But there is something to the extent of like, 
you know, it's it's we are celebrating him for being in this role for playing this character, but at the same time, we're very much so still limiting him from doing anything else other than this. So it's it's this kind of weird contradiction where at once I feel I feel like there's like genuine there's a genuine sincerity to to how the film like very much so love and I want to cherish all that's left of you know Tobin Bell because you know he's like 80, 90 years old now, but he's still rocking it with this role and he's still putting in so much art effort and, and, and like the, the way that uh, Saw X goes with the character, especially at the last act, like putting him in the fucking trap and everything. Like that's that's very cool. But at the same time, uh, I don't know, it's 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 kind of this weird thing where I, I almost kind of wish that it's not so much I wanted to do something new or like reinvent shit. I just wish that they could give him more of a proper send off. I don't know. I don't know if it makes any sense. Like not not so much just like a new ending, but just more like we know that this is probably like basically all that this character could do. So we might as well, you know, just give him the best that, that we could give. I feel like there's I just wanted more of him. I feel like there's still more that could be betrayed there, especially between him and the like whole relationship. Like my God. Like Star X was basically the movie that we absolutely needed. Like that, that, it's basically if I were to ever like be watch all of these movies again, I would watch Saw, and then Saw X, and then immediately skip to Saw Three because I feel like this this is not necessary. Now that we have like Saw X, so I just yeah I feel like overall this series it it's one that I'm very thankful for because without it I wouldn't have become so crazy and obsessed with horror and and just. I, I still remember just how, how much like my teachers were kind of worried because like, I watched them, you know, very early on at, at like an early age and they were like, oh my God, like, you watch Saw? No, well, you know, you gotta tell your mom. And then once my mom knew and I took her to the bookstore and I was like, mom, can I get this box? And she was like, okay, fine. Just don't watch them too much. And I think I might, I might have watched these DVDs like 10 times already in, in my entire life in my very short life so far. So, yeah, that, that is basically oh, the Saw movies and, and what it has meant to me. The, it's kind of fun, it's, it's kind of fun thinking about it while I'm hangover because very much so these movies kind of create the effect of a hangover, you know, so it's, it's and I right now, you know how I am, I, I feel very, very Sawcore. Okay. And I couldn't believe it's the 20th anniversary. Like, I was born a year after the first film came out, so, yeah, that. so you could guess how crazy that is. And I, I'm kind of sad that like, okay, we, we, we'll probably have, okay, Saw 11 next year. And was it like, was there gonna be Saw 12? I know that like there was gonna be like 12, right? 12 or 13, something around that. It's just kind of crazy that maybe one day there's gonna be no more Saw movies. And I still remember the hope that I felt after like Saw 7, even though it was like the final chapter, there were people online back then were still talking about the fact that, oh my God, it could still happen, you know, it could still happen. And, and like, you know, what happened to Adam, what happened to Mark Hoffman? Like there's still so much that could be done. And when Jigsaw came out, it was like another breath of, of hope where it's like, oh my God, maybe, you know, it's gonna keep going. But today I'm actually kind of thinking a bit about how franchises end because that's something that nowadays doesn't quite happen, you know, with Star Wars and with, Marvel and all of that, like they don't let franchises keep on. And I saw this interview with Robert England where he was talking about the fact that he's no longer going to play Freddy. And it kind of makes me think like, you know, actually like, yeah, it's sad that like these franchises have to end, but it kind of makes them more special, you know, once they're over. Still though, it's very depressing. Mm. And it's all the more reason why I'm, pro I'm definitely gonna have to go and watch, you know, Saw 11 and Saw 12 once that comes out because like, I just, I need that dude. I, I need these movies. I, I couldn't get enough of them. Um, they brought me so much joy, so much, so, so much, uh, <laughs> so much joy that I'm ashamed of, that I'm embarrassed of, but at the same time, I'm quite, I don't know, I'm quite giddy about. One of my dreams is that someday I could like watch some movies with like my friends or something. That could, that would be wonderful. I wish I could happen sometime, you know, but yeah, so it's, it's, 
crazy kind of thinking back about that because it very much so formed my my love and my appreciation for the genre. Although I have to do a bit of a quick location change just because my battery was like dying. Mm -hmm. The, I think it was due to the weather, so it's like really, really hot here, so it dies out like really, really quickly. But what I wanted to just say is thank you to all of you who have supported my first three videos so far, and it's just, yeah, the supportive comments that I've, I've been getting, it's it's quite amazing. And, and um, I actually like have done YouTube like before when I was way younger, but I'm just really happy to be back and do this and it's quite refreshing as well for me because you know I've only two videos and already you know I managed to reach out to as many people that I, as, as I've done it's quite refreshing and it's quite overwhelming and amazing and and I'm just really happy to be here and one of the comments specifically said that they are really thankful that you know that I'm making videos like this where it's like I'm just a normal trans you know trans girl I'm just a normal human being talking about stupid silly shit that just means something to me and I hope means something to you too and and you're just sharing that across the internet wherever you are across the world so for me that's also very, it's been very important which is yeah I just want to show you on one normal girl living in her life just having a little silly time chilling gonna find some spurts and chill and make these videos with you so yeah just thank you thank you so much and I mean, what's, what's more meaningful than and these babies? These are absolutely the pinnacle of, of profoundness. I hope I don't look too messy, but, uh, like this is definitely one of my favorite parts of the video just because I, I I always look really much just like doing this. But anyways, I don't know. It's, again, it's so core, okay? It's supposed to be unpolished. It's supposed to be very unflattering. Oh, I should be filming this in a 30 flow right now, but unfortunately, I don't have that much of a budget. <laughs> In the way out. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, sorry. Ah, ah. Oh my god, I love I love the fact that I'm with you so with um the seventh movie, look at this. They don't even have Bobby. Because who cares about Bobby? You know what I'm saying? Who fucking cares about you, Bobby? Nobody does. That wife doesn't deserve you. She doesn't deserve to just go up in blaze, you know? I had it with Yeah. And the all the weird you might wow. Oh my god, there's no more. Oh, that's unfair though. This is really cruel. They don't even have more top and uh, on any of these back covers. That sucks. You know, he's he's so iconic. He's always the best. Honest to God. Look at that. I'm always confused about this. She's sort of like, did he really cut his like, which like I said, like his, his left leg? Did he cut his right? So, that's good. Oh. Feel a lot better definitely like after my over to have one of these like those my god amazing to the fan so high around here I gotta do I'm gonna do it like this but I, I love the fact that these three are so Fucking thin, good deal, I guess. And uh, oh yeah, there it Then I wait. Have this plan. Sure. Let's find it like that. Let's get off them. What then? We're kind of out of fine. It's fine. It's it's hot out here. It's hot in here. And it's hot everywhere, babe. And look. Unfortunately, climate of the world as of late. Oh. Uh, well, you can just do massacre. All right, one last smoke. And I'm out of here. Yeah, please. Things. Oh, I didn't know. We'll see. 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 We'll
connection was. That was down. Save all. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's out. Just a bit. So.